state of search. The state of search news roundup is provided by www.stateofsearch.com, a website which looks at what's going on in the world of search. Hi, welcome to this first episode of the State of Search News Roundup. Since we did not cover search at State of Search until now, and we don't want to overrun you with all news articles, we decided to try and cover the news in a different way. Every one or two weeks, depending on the amount of news, we will bring you the News Roundup in a video and podcast format. For as long as it's interesting. So, here we go. Let's start off with what you can expect in the coming minutes. This week in the State of Search News Roundup, you can expect Foursquare in talks with search engines, Google Buzz and Google Images, Bing working with Facebook and Yahoo, quarterly financial numbers, does the Times paywall work, a German Street View mix-up, and more. Let's start with Foursquare. According to the Telegraph, Foursquare is set to be in talks with Google, Yahoo and Bing to supply its check-in data as a search enhancer. With this, they follow the path of Twitter, who struck a deal with the search engines last year. Foursquare has, of course, very valuable data stored of visited places and tips and recommendations by users. To get a grip on this data would mean a next step for the search engines into understanding their users. In the US, Bing already offers some of Foursquare in their Maps application. But as we all know, Bing is not yet integrated in Europe like it is in the US, so we in Europe are not seeing this yet. Yes, it's still there, Google Buzz, another one of Google's social efforts. Do you still use it? Um, in an attempt to get Buzz in the attention of the developers who might push the product, Google made a move which we have been waiting for with Twitter for a while now. They opened up the Firehose. With the Firehose, all public activities are available as they are published with a single subscription thanks to the syndication of PubSubHub, the Google Go blog says. A couple of months ago, Google suddenly decided on a background image for their homepage. They pulled it back soon after, but everyone was convinced it was a move which was given in by the Bing homepage. Last week, Google made another move which reminded of something Bing did before them. A week after the Google News redesign, Google redesigned their Google Images look and feel. And to be honest, it now looks a lot more like Bing Images. Google Images now has features like instant scrolling between pages, larger thumbnail previews, hovers, a new landing page, and more images shown after a search. Go check it out and see for yourself if you feel like it looks like Bing Images or not. Speaking of Bing, their platform is part of a new rollout Facebook did last week. They, Facebook, launched a new application highlighting shared stories about people who have uh, leveraged Facebook to reconnect, so old school friends, etc. Facebook's intent with the Facebook story uh, application is to um, f get all the s types of stories together and help people share the stories uh, with one another around the world. Facebook is providing location contacts via a Bing map. Remember when Yahoo and Bing decided to join forces? It was supposed to be the alliance which could maybe beat Google. Well, now almost two years later, Yahoo finally started using Bing, but only as a test so far. Yahoo announced on their blog that they started testing organic and paid search listings from Microsoft for up to 25% of Yahoo's search traffic in the US. So again, not in Europe, but in the US. This means these listings uh, are provided with uh, Microsoft results. If you live in the US, you can now get result pages which, uh, with results from both Yahoo and Bing in them. So it's mixed results. Yahoo expects that in the US and Canada, organic search listings in both regular and mobile will be fully powered by the Microsoft platform in the beginning of uh, September, October. Page search is expected to be there in October. Okay, time for some money talk. Yahoo announced their second quarter results for 2010. Revenue was $1,601 million for the second quarter, an increase of 2% compared to a year earlier. Microsoft and Google also gave out numbers. Google's re revenue was up 24% to $6.82 billion, where Microsoft saw a rise of 22% to $16.04 billion. 
You can find all the numbers in the announcements they gave out. Links to those are on the State of Search website. News also came out that Google made $69 million in Russia last year, 2009. Google only holds 22% of the search share there, with Yandex being the biggest with 66%. The revenues of Google were said to be four times less than the revenues of Yandex and twice less as the revenues of Mil.ru, another Russian search engine. Webmasters, pay attention. Bing last week announced a update on Bing Webmaster Tools. The new Webmaster Tools are simplified and have a focus on three key areas crawl, index and traffic. New features are for example Index Explorer and Submit URLs. With Index Explorer you can browse through the Bing Index in order to verify which of your directories and pages have been included. Existing Webmaster Center accounts have been automatically upgraded to the new tools. Over at Search Engine Land, Vanessa Fox posted ex an extensive article on all the changes which you should read if you want to know all the details. Newspapers are having a hard time surviving now that news has mainly become a free accessible on the web. Reason for Rupert Murdoch to start thinking about paywalls. The English newspaper The Times was one of the first to actually get the paywall. Figures by Hitwise show that the paywall in the first week three weeks does not seem to be working. The Times saw a dramatic fall in visits and when people were asked to register. Traffic fell 58% in the five weeks between May 22nd and June 26th, with the Times share of UK news and media web traffic falling from 4.37% to 1.83%, according to the Financial Times. That was before there was even charging involved. After the Times started charging, the visits fell to 33% of the Times pre-registration level. The Guardian even stated that the Times lost almost 90% of all their online readerships. The loss seems huge, but Murdoch actually expected worse, so it was sad. His expectation was that they would be losing a lot more traffic, but the hitwise numbers show the website is still ranked higher than the Financial Times in terms of market share of visitors uh, and are still spending an average of around 3 minutes per visit on the website, indicating that they are happy to pay for the content and not disappearing to alternative sites for news, says Hitwise. We end with a funny mistake Google made, and uh, no, this has nothing to do with the World Cup. A reader of the Dutch website WebSonic noticed that when he was looking at the Dutch place Reisen in Google Street View, some images were not of the Dutch town, but of a German town 127 kilometers away. The images are now removed. Google claimed it was a mistake in the geocoding. Still one of the many Street View funny errors we've seen over the past years. year. Okay, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll tune in next time for a State of Search News Roundup. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye-bye.